Hi, so welcome to video two in the series that we're looking at the June 2018 and it's the Edexcel Higher paper. Okay, in the previous video we finished at, so we stopped at question number six and we're going to be carrying on today from question number seven. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and, there co and then compare your solutions. Okay, so let's move on with question number seven. I'm going to be aiming for this video to be about um, about 20 to 30 minutes or so. Uh, so it should give you about an hour's worth of focused revision. Okay, so the first one is says enlarge shape A by scale factor of a third. Okay, this is going to be slightly tricky to show on the video, but hopefully you should be okay with it. But basically, they're asking us to use the center 0, 1. So it's actually this point here. Okay, so what we mean by that is we can use lines of enlargement. Okay, and a line of enlargement is where we take, it's almost like standing at this particular point and shining a torch. Okay, and light travels in a straight line. And so what we're doing is we're going to be sending these lines of enlargement, these beams of light, to each of the corners, the vertices of this particular shape. Okay, now from this point zero, 01, we're going to go to each of these corners. So if we look at corner A, okay, we've got um, a, vert um, a, a vector of A of a long three and up three so it's going to be written three three okay hopefully that's all right for you so what we're saying is to get from here to point a we go along three jumps and up three jumps okay but now they're asking us to enlarge it by a scale factor of a third okay so rather than going along three and up three we're going to multiply this vector by a third and we're going to go along one and up one okay so along one and up one so vector uh, vertice a point a has now become a dash okay and we basically use the same principle for all the other corners so this one is b and from our center we're going to go along one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to go up six. Okay, so B is going to be six, six. Again, multiply by a third, and it's actually going to be two, two. Okay, so rather than going along six and up six, we're going to go along two and up two. And what you'll find is that if we've drawn our lines of enlargement correctly, all of these vertices will arrive on the same point on the line. It should cross over the line. So if we go to this one here, I've got C. Okay, now hopefully you'll be able to see where this is going to go anyway, but just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to say I'm going to go along 6, I'm going to go up 9. So it's going to be 6 and 9, multiply it by a third. So it's going to be along 2, and it's going to be up 3. Okay, so along 2, up 3, and there it is. Okay, now you could take a guess that uh, point D is going to be here. And again, you can check that if you want to by just doing the actual um, vector but you should be able to see that when we draw in the shape now we've got an enlargement of a third so it's a third the size and it's actually in the right place from the center okay so on to question eight it's a little bit complicated we just need to maybe put together some sort of graph and it says 60 people are asked if they prefer to go on holiday in britain spain or italy okay so what we've got here is britain and then spain uh italy okay uh total all right and then it gives us quite a lot of information about males females all that sort of stuff so i'm going to have male here okay uh female 
and total. Okay, and then really it is a case of just putting in the information that we've been given. And it says initially 38 of the people were male. Okay, well that's all right. So I can write 38 into here. But what it also means, let's just put some lines in here. Okay, what it also means is that if 60 people altogether, then it would mean that we had 60 here and 60 take away 38 is going to be 22. So I can actually say there are 22 females that are also responding to the survey. Okay, then it says 11 of the 32 people who said Britain were female. Okay, so again, I can put that into there. And there are 32 people who said Britain, so I can write 32 as a total, which also means then I've got 21 males. Okay, who said Britain? Eight males said Italy. So we're just kind of going through this process of filling in all the boxes because if eight people said Italy, 21 people said Spain, and we've got a total of 38. If we work that out, it would then mean that nine people must have said Spain, who were male. But then it says 12 people said Spain, so therefore three of them must have been female, and we've got 12 there. Okay, so we've got 22 people in total who said, who were female, 11 said Britain, three said Spain, so it must mean the missing number in there would be eight, and the missing number as a total who said Italy would be 16. So really with these types of questions, it's just a case of putting together a grid that kind of works for you, um, and then filling in the numbers um, in a way that's sensible to you. Okay, the question actually is, what is the probability that this female said Spain and she's one that is chosen at random? Well, we know there are 22 females, okay, and the probability of saying Spain was 3. So the answer is 3 out of 22. So it's one of those questions, appears a little bit complex on the surface, and you do have to spend a bit of time putting together something, but the actual uh, working out in the end is relatively straightforward. Okay, let's move on then to question number 9. And we've got uh, Jean invests £12,000 into an account paying compound interest for two years. Okay, in the first year, the rate of interest is X, but at the end of the first year, the value of her investment is 12,336. So let's just have a look at using that information to figure out what her interest rate was in the first year. So what she got was 12,336, and what she invested was 12,000. Now that's multiplied by what we call the multiplier, to the value of n, and in this particular case, n is going to be one year. Now, you might use uh, some sort of grid to be able to do this. I tend to use this particular formula because it works for me. And what I can then figure out using my calculator is 12,336 divided by 12,000 is going to give us a multiplier of 1.028 is equal to the multiplier. If you're not sure about how to do this, please do have a look on some of the uh, playlist on compound interest, and that will give you quite a lot of information. So what we're being told then is that this is the first year. Okay, all righty. So the second year, the interest rate is X over two. So in other words, it's a half of the interest rate in the first year. Well, what is the interest rate in the first year? It's actually this bit here, it's 2.8%, okay? So in the first year, she's got 2.8%. In the second year, she's gonna get 1.4%. Okay, so we take the value of her investment and we're gonna use the same formula. The investment now, the initial amount is 12,336 and the multiplier rather than being 1.028 is 1.014 and again to the power of one year. Plug that into a calculator and you're going to get a total amount of £12,508.75. 
704 okay so we need to make that to the nearest penny so the value of our investment after the second year is going to be £12,508.70p and again if you're not sure about that please do have a look at some of the compound interest uh, playlist videos and that will help you okay okay so on to question 10 which is a vector on a grid question and it says on the first uh, part a is on the grid draw and label vector minus 2a okay well this vector is going to be going in the opposite direction it's going to be twice the size and it's going to be parallel to vector a okay so the way that's going to work is we can draw some little dots in here okay and I can just join those two and that is going to be minus 2a okay so part b of this it says work out a plus 2b as a column vector well let's have a look at um, those vectors themselves so if we look at a okay that's going to be a long one and up two we write that as one two okay if we look now at b that's going to be a long one and down three remember it's going in the opposite direction so B is going to be a long one and down three okay so those are my two vectors for A and B the only difference now is I need to multiply B by two and then I need to add it to A okay so the way I'm going to do that if I want 2b I'm going to multiply this by 2 and I get 2 and minus 6 okay and then I'm going to add this vector which is a plus 2b together okay if I get that I'm going to get a plus 2b which is going to be equal to 3 and then 2 plus minus 6 is the same as saying 2 minus 6 which is minus 4 okay and that would be the answer to this particular question 3 and minus 4 okay hope that's okay for you let's move on to a functions question which is um, question number 11 and as I mentioned I'm going to keep this video to about 20 minutes or so uh, 25 minutes or so give you the opportunity to do a little bit of uh, revision fairly focused but revision please do have a go at these sorts of questions and then compare your solution so the first one is f and g of functions such that uh, f of x equals blah and g of x equals that okay then it's signed it says find the function of minus five okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take minus five and we're going to simply plug it into here okay because it's the f of x okay so the f of minus five is equal to two over minus 5 squared which is going to be 2 over 25 and that's the answer <laughs> okay so it's fairly straightforward the f of minus 5 is going to be equal to 2 over 25 okay and then the next part of the question is it says find f g of 1 okay well with these particular uh, types of um, functions we work kind of backwards with them and again there is a playlist on the channel so if you're not sure about these questions please do have a look at some of the other videos on the playlist so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at g of 1 okay so g of 1 is basically where I take the value of 1 and I plug it into the g function okay so that's going to give me 4 times 1 cubed okay so that's just going to be 4 so I'm taking this value of the g function and now I'm going to plug it into the f function so to get me f g of 1 I take this and I'm going to take it and put it into here so what I end up with is 2 over 4 squared which is going to be 2 over 16 which is going to be 1 over 8 and that's the answer to this question so again they look a little bit tricky on the surface but actually providing you do them fairly logically you should get uh, the answers 
as we've got there but again please do refer to the playlist themselves okay let's move on then to question number 12 uh, where we've got a series of graphs and we're just going to be asked to put the uh, graph letter into the grid at the bottom now unfortunately it's not coming out particularly well on the video but the first one is going to be where y is proportional to x okay so it's directly proportional if it's directly proportional it's this relationship here so it's actually graph number B okay the second one is y is proportional to x squared okay well it's actually going to be this one here okay so it's like a quadratic equation isn't it it's an x squared equation okay so it's got that nice curve with it so it's actually going to be D okay um, then we've got y is proportional to the root of x is actually the opposite so it's actually going to be graph a okay and then y is inversely proportional to x so that's going to be the final graph which is this one here it's two marks on this particular series of questions you could spend a bit of time on it plugging in sort of different numbers if you wanted to but it's as well to be kind of aware of these sorts of graphs and occasionally these sorts of questions do come up in an Excel type questions okay I think we're going to leave it there we will stop at that particular point so that hopefully is giving you some fairly good focused revision please do add any comments below if you're not sure I always try to respond to you do have a look at some of the other playlists on the channel and I look forward to seeing you in part three of this particular series of videos where we're looking at the June 2018 paper two okay look forward to seeing you then thanks now